Now, if you keep your money in the banking system, the problem is that you are earning a negative yield on your investment, which is absolutely crazy, which means that you will have less money in the bank in real terms in the future than you have now. Hello, this is Maurice Jackson. Before we present today's interview, I'd like to remind our listening audience that I'm a licensed broker to sell precious metals through Miles Franklin, where we have unlimited options to expand your precious metals portfolio. Stay tuned to the end of our interview for contact details, and I look forward to the opportunity to speak with you. Welcome to Proven and Probable, where we deliver mining insights and bullion sales in the form of physical delivery, offshore depositories, and private blockchain distributed ledger technology. Welcome to Proven and Probable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us for a conversation is Giant Bandari, the founder of the world renowned Capitalism and Morality and a prominent, highly sought advisor to institutional investors. Mr. Bandari, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me, Maurice. Glad to have you on the program, sir. We have a number of topics to address today from geopolitics to unique buying opportunities in the natural resource space. Beginning with geopolitics, let's begin in the Middle East. Syria has a number of events that are unfolding there at the moment. Giant, you and I had a discussion offline prior to our interview, and you had a number of concerns regarding the turmoil in Syria, specifically with the U.S. expatriating their troops from there. And yesterday, the U.S. confirmed that they have killed the leader of ISIS. What has you concerned about Syria right now? Well, I am actually extremely impressed with what... Uh, Trump has been doing in the Middle East. He is reducing American influence and American presence in the Middle East, which is exactly what you need to do. What you need to do is to let these people be forced into a situation where they talk with each other. It is not the job of Americans to sit in the Middle East and negotiate and arbitrate problems between these people. Now, here is the problem, Maurice. Uh, Islam is divided into something like 60, 70 or 80 different sects. Uh, the Middle East is an extremely tribal area and they are fighting with each other all the time. They have indeed been fighting with each other for the last millennia or more, probably two millennia or more. And they will continue to fight because these are very tribal people. And in fact, the problem is that the fight is not just between those 60 or 70 sects. The fight is within those sects as well. Uh, because the problem with tribalism is that everyone wants to be the tribal leader. So this war and problems in the Middle East are never, ever going to end. And it is best that the America leaves the Middle East and let these people run their affairs. The job of America is only one thing. And that is to make sure that they don't let problems increase to a level that those problems become a problem for Americans and other Western allies. And this is, in my view, exactly what I'm, uh, uh, Trump has been doing. He wants to focus on problems that can become a problem for America and rest. We should leave it for the local people to deal, it, deal with themselves. How does the killing of uh, ISIS's leader impact the power struggle here in Syria? Well, I mean, there will always be a power struggle. Uh, I mean, this is there is no escape from it. Uh, these people will always fight with each other, and there is nothing, absolutely nothing you can do about it, Maurice. And I'm not just talking about uh, the Middle East, and it is not, it is, of course, Islam is an issue, but the problem is tribalism and irrationalities of people of the Middle East, Africa, Indian subcontinent, and most of Latin America. These people are socially structured in a way that they will always, always fight. And you can, by imposing your ways, Western ways on these pe people, you can only delay their problems and actually subsidize their problems, which means that their problems will increase to a limit that you can no longer control anymore. So why let uh, these problems increase in the first place? Let them fight with each other, and that will keep the population low. Now, that's a very inhuman kind of a statement in a way, but really there is simply no other possibility for these people. They will always, always fight with each other. I am sitting in a third world country right now, Maurice, and this is the way this, these societies operate. 
Truly unfortunate. Uh, a lot of innocent lives going to be lost in uh, situations like that, and they have been for, as you mentioned, for millennia. Staying in the region, there are protests in Beirut. What's going on there? Um, well, this is uh, another Arab Spring is starting in uh, in the Middle East, um, and really one big problem, Maurice, is three legs of problems that are considered good in the world today. Uh, quite erroneously. And those three things is democracy, education, and prosperity. And all these three things, democracy, education, and prosperity, is leading actually to a lot of problems in the third world. Lebanon is uh, striking and protesting against corruption. And it sounds so good. We feel so warm when we hear about it that these people are finally on the street. In fact, as much as one fourth of the population of uh, Lebanon in many cities is out on the streets protesting against corruption. Now, that should tell us that these people are waking up. They want to get rid of corruption from their societies. But really, if you interrogate these people, and I again tell you, I'm sitting in a third world country, I will be in the Middle East next week. The problem with these people is that they indeed want corruption to stop but they want other people to stop being corrupt. They don't want themselves to not be corrupt. And that doesn't really add up because everyone wants to be corrupt. They just want other people not to be corrupt. And the whole the concept of democracy has corrupted the minds of these people. These people think that democracy is some kind of magic wand. They don't really want to understand the details and nuances of public policy, but they think all they have to do is to vote for the right people and make their country uh, good. That does not work. Uh, and there is a huge problem, uh, another problem, Maurice, and that is increasing prosperity. And I know you want to talk about Chile as well. The problem is the more prosperous people become, the less they have, the more distractions they have, the le more tired, the, the more intellectually tired they are because they have nothing else to do in their lives. How much time can you spend drinking and watching the TV? And that is actually exactly when people go and state, start creating troubles. That is exactly when revolutions happen. That is when prosperity increases, res revolution have a higher prob probability of happening. And that is exactly what is happening in Lebanon. It is not going to end well. Before we leave the Middle East, how about the situation with Saudi Arabia and Iran? Any comments? Um, well, I mean, uh, listen, we always complain about uh, why America enables a dictatorial government to stay in place in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I am actually completely on the side of uh, America. This is one involvement America has got to do. Uh, and the problem is that if America leaves Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is going to disintegrate. But worse of all, Iran will become the superpower in the Middle East. Uh, and compared to Iran, Saudi Arabia is a saint. You have to have a presence in Saudi Arabia to make sure Iran behaves and does not develop nuclear weapons. And it is indeed America's job, uh, very charitably, and the rest of the world should thank America for it. It is indeed America's job and the job of the rest of the world to stop Iran from developing nuclear weapons because they will develop it if they are not under forever pr pressure to not develop it. Uh, and that will be a massive nuisance for the world if they develop it. So we should, everyone should thank America for doing charity work for the rest of humanity. Moving on to Kashmir, what is going on there? Uh, well, Kashmir is an interesting thing, uh, Maurice. It, it is a, a Muslim majority province, uh, which was a part of uh, what was the British Indian Empire. Uh, and in 1947, when India and Pakistan became independent, Kashmir became an independent country. There were actually several other small uh, independent countries which were subsequently subsumed by India and Pakistan. But Kashmir was left alone because it was a much bigger province. Uh, and at certain point of time, I think sometime in 
sev- late 47 or 48 uh, Pakistani insurgents started to occupy Kashmir when Kashmiri king decided to merge with India. Now, here is the problem. Uh, Kashmir was Muslim majority and the king was a Hindu king. And that creates this strange problem between India and Pakistan because Pakistan thinks that Kashmir legitimately belongs to Pakistan and India thinks Kashmir belongs to India. Now, when Kashmir was incorporated into India, the understanding was that Kashmir would stay a special place within India, which means that Kashmir will have its own constitution and own flag. Uh, Last week, uh, sorry, in August this year, uh, Indian government removed that special status for Kashmir and incorporated that fully into India. Uh, And I uh, have to say that, uh, Maurice, every time I have talked with you in the last five years, I have talked about how bad the situation in India is and how bad Modi is. And I will continue to say that because Modi is uh, an evil, he's a horrible person for India, and India is getting degraded continuously. But at the same time, I must praise what he has done in Kashmir because Kashmir has been suffering terrorism throughout these decades. And there was actually uh, an expulsion of Hindus from Kashmir uh, in 1990 under the supervision of Indian government, which was absolutely crazy because you, in a Hindu majority country, allowed Hindus to be thrown out of Kashmir in 1990. So what Modi is doing is that he's trying to restrict this uh, control Uh, terrorism that has been happening in Kashmir and Pakistan clearly is a big supporter of terrorism and uh, so Modi by trying to fully incorporate Kashmir into India is trying to reduce that problem my view is that he will fail my view is it will not work out Kashmir problem will become much worse but someone had to do something and that's what Modi is doing Let's shift the narrative on to South America, where there are riots ongoing as we speak right now in Chile. What has your attention there? As you know, Maurice, I completely dislike uh, democracy. Democracy is the worst concept possible to govern a country. Um, Augusto Pinochet, uh, now he had his own negative sides, but he tried to bring sanity to Chile. Chile would not have been what it is today without Pinochet. Now, Pinochet is seen as a negative character, but you have to remember that Pinochet came into power in Chile exactly then when Marxists were trying to take over Chile. Mm-hmm. Now, Pinochet has been um, out of the scene for the last uh, two, two and a half decades, uh, and my view is that the sanity that Pinochet imposed on Chile has slowly gone away. Chile has become much more prosperous and it has become much more democratic. And neither of the, these two things work very well, particularly under democracy, because people is start to think that there's something called a fair share. And I'm talking about the underclass. The underclass starts to think that because they have a fair share in the voting rights, they must also have the fair share in economic situation of the country. But that isn't the, the, the way universe is structured. We should get paid for how much we produce, not based on our vote. But that is today the problem in Chile. Uh, they are fighting because they want the underclass wants more money. Uh, but unfortunately, money doesn't grow on trees. And this means that this will be a suicidal path for Chile because they will fight for more money while destroying the economy, which means that they will actually have less money for everyone. And I feel sad for Chile. But again, in a democratic system, that has to happen because populism is what rules democracies and populism means that the underclass, the least competent people decide public policy, which is very, very ironical. Well, if you feel sorry for Chile, let's move north on to Venezuela. What are the latest developments there? Well, I have a Venezuelan friend, uh, Jose Nino, who will be speaking at uh, Capitalism and Morality, a seminar I run every year in Vancouver, Maurice, uh, and I hope he will talk uh, a bit about uh, Venezuela. 
But uh, whenever I talk with my Venezuelan friends, they just tell me the same thing, that the problem is that Venezuela is now in a vicious cycle. And that is actually also a problem with Brazil as well, that the smartest people from these countries have been leaving these countries for the last 10 to 20 years now, which means that the the brain drain has been a huge problem with Brazil and Venezuela. And you see a lot of Venezuelans and Brazilians in uh, Miami, Houston, London, uh, and Portugal. Uh, And uh, this is not going to end very well because once you have lost your leaders in your country, your society just completely becomes incapable of governing itself. And that has exactly what happened to Venezuela, they will do more wrongs to correct prior wrongs. And that is the problem with lack of leadership and existence of democratic system. They will continue to do more wrongs. And you can also see the same thing in Argentina, where uh, Marcio was removed uh, a, a couple of days back from presidential position. He will lose his seat. And uh, the extremely populist people will come back into power in Argentina because the common guy simply does not understand economics and public policy, but he still has the vote. Truly unfortunate situation there. Before we leave geopolitics, Canada recently held their elections in which the left won. Were you surprised and what type of implications will the results have on the natural resource base? Oh, I, uh, I'm heartbroken with what's happened in Canada. Uh, And I think Canada has had only one last chance to correct its course. Um, Leftists have destroyed that country over the last 10 to 15 years. Canada has opened the gates wide open for refugees and immigrants. That is not how you can keep a society together because you just destroy your society by bringing in all kinds of people into your country who bring in crime, disease and Worst of all, cultural system that is alien to Western culture. Uh, and that is what Justin Trudeau has done over the last five years. And I think it will, it will continue at a, with more acceleration over the next five years. Now, remember, Canada brings in about 1.5% or so new people into the country every year. So in the next five years, he will have brought in something like 7 to 10, 7 to 10 percent new people into Canada. Canada brings in more people into its it than any other country that I can think of. Um, and Canada will culturally get destroyed. Um, and I really see no way out for Canada now because the po- proportion of leftist, left leaning people is massive in Canada. And uh, unfortunately, immigrants tend to predominantly vote for the left and which means that Canada will become more and more leftist as time goes by. Now what will happen to the natural resource sector? Natural resource sector will continue as it has. Uh, It will suffer in some parts of the country and uh, like in Alberta and people in Alberta now want to leave the, uh, the country. They want to have their own country and I can fully understand that Uh, But the problem is that leftism has become uh, the base of basic value even in Alberta. So I'm not even sure if a separation of Alberta will help Albertans. Um, In terms of natural resources, uh, Maurice, uh, you know, natural resource nationalism is a problem everywhere in the world. Environmentalism is becoming uh, a religion, a very, very fanatic religion. Uh, And you have to be careful everywhere now. You know, I asked that question because we often view Canada as being a safe jurisdiction. And and, uh, this is one of the the vices of that. um, When you have elections that come out this way and people don't realize the ramifications longer term. Switching Uh, gears. Oh, yes, sir. Listen, I mean, Canada still has the rule of the law. And uh, that is the great thing about Canada for the next, you know, the degradation will happen slowly because there are checks and balances on the government. They just can't do anything they want to do. So fortunately, there are checks and balances. But um, one thing is for sure, Maurice, that Canada is on a downward path right now and it will continue to get degraded uh, unless something 
happens very quickly. I hope the government falls within a year and uh, that gives an opportunity for something like Maxime Bernier of People's Party of Canada to come to power. Mm -hmm. Switching gears, what are the precious metal prices indicating to the market? Um, I think we have talked about it, uh, Maurice. Uh, there is a huge ab amount of geopolitical uncertainty in the world. The Middle East is in, in a crisis, and the more America reduces its involvement in the Middle East, the Middle East will get worse and worse. And exactly the same will happen in the Indian subcontinent as well. And these are exactly the people who consume most of the precious metals the Middle Eastern people and Indian subcontinent people. And with economies of these countries deteriorating and social problems of these countries getting worse, there will be a huge interest among these people to buy gold. Of course, the problem is that if gold price keeps going up, they have that much of less economic capacity to buy gold and silver. Uh, but I certainly see a, a huge amount of interest in gold and silver in these countries, and that will continue and I think that is already reflecting in the price of gold and uh, silver. Speaking of buying opportunities, within the five precious metals, silver and platinum and numismatic gold are on fire sale relative to palladium and gold bullion. Do you use the price anomalies and distortions as buying opportunities for platinum and silver? Uh, I don't even think there is anything ca called price anomaly. I think prices are what they are. Uh, and I don't really try to play the ratios between these uh, metals. Um, I, of course, uh, still think that uh, gold and silver are precious metals. They are not commodities, uh, and they will go up as social problems uh, increase. But I am not sure which metal I should take a side for because I don't believe in those ratios, and I don't think they necessarily work. Giant, a number of audience members don't understand the prudence and merit of owning physical precious metals. For someone that's never purchased precious metals, what would you like to share with them? Um, it, it's extremely important, Maurice, that you protect your savings. Now, how do you protect your savings? If you don't understand the stock market, you are very likely to lose your money in the stock market. A lot of people buy properties and flip properties, but you know this does not always work. It might have worked uh, for a certain number of years, but it does not mean it will continue to work in the future. So what other opportunities do you have if you can't trust the property market and you can't trust the stock market? And you should not, because if you don't understand these markets, you will be the sucker. Um, what is left with you is put keeping your money in the banking system or buy something that you can hold with yourself. Now, if you keep your money in the banking system, the problem is that you are earning a negative yield on your investment, which is absolutely crazy, which means that you will have less money in the bank in real terms in the future than you have now. So that brings you to gold and silver because gold and silver at least give you zero yield and more importantly that wealth is in your own pocket in your own control at your own house and that is why i think precious metals have a very important place in your uh, investment strategy and diverse diversification strategy for audience members that are interested in purchasing physical precious metals please visit proven and probable.com we're licensed through the state of minnesota and proud to be an independent contractor for miles franklin precious metals investments to service all your precious metals investments moving on to junior mining companies giant you usually wrote a uh, uh amusing on the health of the space and a number of opportunities that you see what are you noticing in space that has you so optimistic what is very interesting maurice is that over this year um the exploration and junior development stage companies have fallen in price. If you look at the Venture Index, it is actually as low as it was in the first week of January, despite the fact that gold price has gone up 10 to 20% in the same duration, which means that in terms of profitabilities, the projected profitabilities of these companies, uh, the profitability has actually improved very significantly, particularly because cost of mining these things haven't really changed much. 
oil price is v- continues to be low uh, and as a result uh, the profitability projected profitability has gone up and as a result the valuation of these stocks should have gone up but they have actually fallen and that is always a very interesting opportunity because there is blood running on the street people are feeling very pessimistic and that is exactly when you can make the easiest and best money if you can identify good companies run by good managements companies that have good projects if you can do that you can actually make a lot of money and this is truly the best opportunity that you can have i want to be selling morris when the prices go up i don't most people like to buy when prices are going up i like to start selling at that time yeah, absolutely giant this is everyone's favorite uh, part of our interviews is when we discuss arbitrage opportunities because you're the most respected name with a proven pedigree of success here do you have any to share with us um, not many, Maurice. Uh, the year is coming to a close. The, there is a lot of pessimism in the market, and the end result is that there are not many mergers happening right now. I think they will pick up again early next year. But something that people might want to have a look at is a company called Core Gold. The ticker is CGLD, and Core Gold is trading at about 22 cents, and it has a hostile takeover offer from an Australian company. And that offer values core gold about 90% higher than the current share price of core gold, which is a very nice upside. But of course, there are a lot of risks because this offer has not been accepted by core gold. Core gold is looking at other opportunities. But at 22 cents, I think the downside risk is limited uh, and there could be a nice upside in Uh, owning core gold particularly if this hostile takeover offer is accepted by core gold management kind of reminds me last year with maritime resources and and anaconda mining Uh, besides arbitrage opportunities which junior mining companies have your attention at the moment and why you just mentioned the two companies uh, maurice anaconda and maritime resources are two companies that uh, i am paying a lot of attention to uh, and people should actually try to understand what's the, the, the geographical situation between Anaconda, Maritime, and Rambler mining. And the, the interesting thing is that these people crisscross each other to deliver. They have projects and mills in that area, uh, and they pass each other all the time. And they waste a lot of resources in moving these trucks and uh, processing at uh, far away places when they could be doing uh, processing next doors. In my view, the three companies should merge. Um, So in my view, Anaconda and Maritime eventually have to merge. Both offer an upside anyway. If they merge, there is actually economies of a scale anyway between the two countries. So there is a double upside a merger happens so and i think uh, this will happen and uh, i am happy to just invest in them for the current upside anyway so these are the two companies another company which uh, you and i both like is miramont resources and miramont today fell to eight and a half cents uh, and that is not much higher than the cash value per share of this company so uh, and these are always good opportunities when other people don't care about these companies and we're proud to have Marymount Resources as a sponsor, and we are also very, very proud shareholders. And uh, I'm actively buying uh, Marymount Resources as we speak. <laughs> All right, moving on to philosophy. Mr. Bandari, you are the founder of a philosophical forum focused on reason, argumentation, and liberty. Sir, please introduce us to capitalism and morality. Um, I have been running this seminar in Vancouver, Canada for the last uh, 10, 11 years, Maurice, and it gives me a huge amount of satisfaction to run this seminar. I want to invite people and is, who speak on subjects to do with the greatness of Western civilization, uh, and in fact, the only civilization I have known in my life. Um, and I want to... Uh, do whatever I can to protect the concept of Western civilization and protect it and hopefully to keep uh, people understand 
uh, why Western civilization is so prosperous and peaceful compared to what happens elsewhere. Uh, and uh, the next one will, the next seminar will happen on the 25th of July uh, next year in downtown Vancouver. Who are the featured speakers this year and uh, or next year, I should say, and uh, can you share what they will be discussing? Um, I'm still working on the speakers, but the confirmed speakers are Marco Woodser, Rick Rool, Adrian Day, Doug Casey. There will be a lot of other speakers. It will be a very interesting seminar, Maurice. Bob Moriarty, I know you're listening to this interview, sir. I hope we get you in there finally. <laughs> <laughs> I I keep talking. I keep inviting Bob, but uh, Bob, uh, I would absolutely love to have Bob Moriarty come and speak one day. All right, you've covered the dates and the admission for the location. Is that correct? I, won't... Uh, I have uh, Maurice, and uh, there is a discount of ten percent for your audience. They have to use coupon code Jackson. Easy to remember. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. All right. Mr. Bhandari, last question, sir. What did I forget to ask? Um, I think we have covered a lot of uh, things, uh, Maurice, and I think uh, what people have to really start understanding about uh, societies around the world is to pay attention to the fact that these three things, democracy, education, and prosperity, are actually having negative effect on social stability around the world. Now, I'm not saying we should not have education and prosperity. All I'm saying is that understanding the problems that education and prosperity creates and democracy, of course, which is a horrible evil system, um, helps us alleviate the problems that we are facing today. Of course, that's not going to happen because these are the three gods of uh, today's world, democracy, education and prosperity. And certainly democracy is a complete evil system of ruling societies. Giant, for someone listening and wants to learn more about your work, please share the website address. Um, everything I do goes on my website, Maurice, and it's giantbhandari.com. Before you make your next bullion purchase, be sure you call me. I'm a licensed representative for Miles Franklin Precious Metals Investments, but we provide a number of options to expand your precious metals portfolio from physical delivery offshore depositories, precious metal IRAs, and private blockchain distributed ledger technology. Call me directly at 855-505-1900. That number again is 855-505-1900. Or you may email maurice at milesfranklin.com. Last but not least, please subscribe to provenandprobable.com for mining insights and bullion sales. Giant Bandari, the founder of Capitalism and Morality. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.